uh, good morning to all of you. Uh, today we have with us uh, Professor Sudhir Kumar sir and uh, Dr. Shailesh Pai with us. So today we have uh, chosen a very important topic uh, pertaining to trauma in orthopedics. So as you all know, uh, when a fracture happens, it is not only the bone that uh, gets injured, it is also the soft tissues that get injured. So when you uh, treat your patient who has undergone a trauma or sustained a trauma, you have to uh, keep in mind that the soft tissues also play a very important role in the final management. So you can have a closed fracture or an open fracture, the handling of uh, both of which is quite different. So you should be knowing how exactly you will be managing these cases. So we have the app people with us to discuss about the same. I welcome uh, both of you on board today. Uh, good morning, sir. So let us start with uh, today's session. So shall I spice, sir, over to you. Yeah, uh, thank you, Dr. Nopal. So we are discussing about uh, the soft tissue injuries and also the open fractures, which is very apt because many times we as surgeons tend to overlook the extent of the injuries that have happened due to the trauma. We have a look at the radiograph, but we forget to look what exactly the condition of the soft tissue is. And we know for sure that the final functional outcome of the patient is very much dependent on the soft tissue condition because it not only helps in healing the fracture, but an open fracture can get infected leading to a downstair uh, bad outcome. So the way we tackle this is extremely important. And with the experience of uh, Professor Sudhir Kumar sir that we have, uh, it's very important that we learn how to deal with this uh, all the way from uh, the initial management as well as until the bone moves on to heal. So sir, uh, this is a legendary statement uh, by uh, Girdlestone that we need to understand that bone is a living tissue, it is a plant with its roots in soft tissue. And when the vascular connections are damaged, it requires the technique of a cabinet maker and understanding of a gardener. So briefly, we should not be a carpenter, but a gardener. How true is this statement even today, sir? Is absolutely age old statement, but uh... It has a lot of science behind it. Uh, you see, when an impact of an injury is created onto any part of the body, it has to go through the soft tissues. You cannot have a direct impact on the bone. That means the it, energy, the quantum of energy which is which is sufficient enough to break a bone would definitely hurt the overlying envelope. And this envelope is made of, you know that, of a skin, subcutaneous tissue, deep tissues, and the musculotendinous area, the vascular structures, and the neural structures. So the impact is borne by e each one of the tissue. So I think uh, this, uh, this statement, which is being um, made by Goodelstern way long back, is, is absolutely true and holds good. So in short, I think, uh especially during our residency in our initial part of training, we need to take this statement deep into our brains that bone, unlike other tissues, is heals by bone itself. So, and it is a living structure. So the way we handle it, we should not cause any further trauma to what has already been caused because of the injury. Like Sir said, the amount of forces which reaches the bone is actually lesser than the forces reaching the soft tissues because a lot of forces are already dissipated in the soft tissues causing damage to it and then it reaches the bone breaking it. So we will not really understand the entire spectrum of injuries just by looking at the radiographs in front of us and we need a thorough assessment. So this uh, soft tissue, uh, once the initial impact happens, there is an injury. Once there is mobilization at the fracture site, 
there is again injury and as a surgeon when we tend to operate a, a third trauma is also being uh, impacted on that particular soft tissue so i think as a surgeon all of us should remember this particular aspect as well so a big dilemma or a challenge facing uh, any of us unexperienced surgeons or the residents is how do we assess the quantum of injury that has happened to uh, the soft tissues in a closed fracture many at times in open fracture we can see what lies in front of our eyes but in a closed fracture we tend to overlook it and we do not really understand the magnitude of the injury sir uh, how do we really assess uh, the amount of injury and what precautions should we take to really understand the impact of the trauma absolutely right i think it's it's really uh, a challenge to any orthopedic trainee to do an assessment of soft tissues in a closed fracture because though, as you said open fractures it's obvious it is you can see through it you can see through the wound i mean it's down to the bone it's all open for you to assess and document it but for so far as soft tissue injuries are concerned one has to be extremely careful uh to start with it's very important to know the history of that patient how did he get the injury where exactly he got the injury whether it was a blunt trauma whether it is a high velocity injury or whether it is a domestic injury so the the environment in which the injury has occurred is very important for the for any orthopedic surgeon to understand the the injury to the underlying tissues for example you see many a times you have a, let's say fracture pelvis you come across a high velocity injuries or patient fallen from a from a from a height and the patient may just come to you with fractured pelvis or fracture of the upper end of the femur or injury in the back so you may find avulsions of the soft tissues which close avulsions and this may ultimately give you a huge hematoma there so it's very important to know that how the injury has occurred so what do you classically call as moral and lower lesion and uh, say let's say another example if we look at it that the many times you find a close injury and there's a traction on it like you know brachial plexus injury the the limb is being uh, mm, under traction and what you find a brachial plexus is a pulse you may hardly find a just a fracture of the clavicle or maybe a fracture of the upper end of the humerus but what you ultimately see over there is nothing but a brachial plexus injury the patient is not able to move the hand so you get surprised so it's very important to know what exactly the mode of injury has been and soft tissues play a very important role and we classically say that the peripheral neurovascular assessment of a patient with injury must be asserted no examination is complete without the assessment of peripheral neurovascular structure which is invariably the the surgeon must put his hand on to the pulses peripheral pulses that should become involuntary involuntary uh, examination should be done uh, automatically so this has to be ingrained right into the mind of our younger generation i think that is a, another is in compartments compartment syndrome so 
which may look very innocuous to you and there may not even be a fracture. There is just a soft tissue injury and you find it is a, the, the swelling keeps increasing over there. And what do you find? That patient complains to you a excruciating pain. So that has to be kept in mind. Uh, I think these are the most important parameters that a candidate should examine. As rightly said, uh, the history plays a huge role. We need to speak to our patients to know the circumstances leading on to the injury. Like said by professor, what type of injury was it? Was it a blunt trauma? What type of a high velocity? Was the limb crushed between uh, solid uh, high weight bearing structures? All this we will come to know only if we take a proper history from the patient or the people who were in the vicinity of the patient during the injury. What we tend to do is just have a look at the radiographs and try, tend to treat the patient, which is not what we, one needs to do, especially in our residency and during our early period, because once that particular habit seeps into our culture, it becomes difficult for us to change it uh, as, as we grow up. There is a beautiful saying that the eyes cannot see what the mind does not know. So we need to understand that all fractures will have certain degree of soft tissue trauma. We need to impregnate this in our mind and any fractures that we take care of henceforth, we have to look out for these injuries, not miss out on uh, compartment syndrome, vascular injuries, even neural injuries like what Sir said, traction injuries of the brachial plexus. Many a times we overlook them. It so happens that open fractures get better treatment than closed injuries and the uh, prognosis we do not explain to the patient because even closed injuries can have disastrous uh, outcomes. We do not explain them on day one and they can have a much poorer outcome compared to even a grotesque looking open injuries because in open injuries we be more cautious and careful in dealing with them but closed injuries we simply try to neglect them. So we need to have a fair assessment and then deal with this appropriately. So uh, a patient who is traveling in a car and who sustains an RTA is quite different from a person who slips from his bike and falls. So when he falls from a bike, there will be an initial impact which might cause a fracture, for example, like a clavicle fracture. And later on, he might have a stretch that happens at the neck level, also leading to a brachial plexus injury. The fracture itself might be quite painful for him so that he's not able to tell us that he's not able to sense his upper limb. We try to uh, find the fracture. We treat the fracture with a brace. Maybe after three weeks, he comes to us telling that he has some loss of sensation around the shoulder. Maybe. So I think our uh, primary assessment should include uh, looking at the soft tissue, finding out the fracture and also eliciting his neural as well as vascular status. So I think that should be your complete assessment of any trauma. Let it be from a mild slip and fall to the major uh, road traffic accidents. Itself. So I think that's what we wanted to convey from the assessment of soft tissue injuries in close fractures. Sir, just want to emphasize on one more particular thing like uh, are there certain areas in our body where a close fracture occurs but it is, it is much more disastrous than an open fracture. For example, like the proximal end of the tibia or the distal end of the tibia, wherein the soft tissue envelope is quite small and it can lead to much more disastrous uh, results if we don't uh, handle them properly. Anything about that? Sir? So this is very true in those uh, areas where the bone is nearly subcutaneous. So we can think of proximal tibia, distal tibia, even calcaneum for that matter. All these areas, uh, the blood supply to the overlying skin is from the underlying soft tissues. And when the shearing forces occur, like Sir mentioned, there can be a, something like a moral level lesion leading on to the loss of vascularity to the entire overlying skin. This cannot be ascertained properly if, on day one. And over a period of time, it can lead on to contusion of the skin, even necrosis and loss of the entire uh, overlying structures over the bone. So in all these areas, uh, it becomes very, very important to know how the condition of soft tissue status is before we tend to incise. What is also important is to understand the so-called zone of fracture and zone of injury. 
zone of fracture we can easily make out looking at the radiograph how badly the bone is broken for how how much length or area the bone is broken but there is a zone of injury around the fracture in which we should not be putting any external fixator pins because the uh, the damage to the soft tissue has already happened and in case we put pins through it, it there is very high chances of infection of the pin leading on to problems later on so all these aspects is once uh, we assess how much soft tissues are damaged around the fracture we should be using this knowledge to our advantage to treat the patients